All right, guys, welcome again to another favorite show. This episode that we bring you the best. You know how it is now. This is Max Stories, and everything happens on this show. When I mean everything, we bring you that you're a celebrity, and we go inside, you know, up close and personal with them. Things you don't know. Well, and the things you do, but you were not really sure, right? So on today's segment, on this show today, we're going to be having an amazing guy. Yeah, yeah. And this guy, I'm sure you guys must have heard about him, but you don't know him, right? Because what he does is always behind the scene, right? Yeah, yeah. So if I should say, without no introduction, the way he's usually introduced on every other song you hear, I would say is, how did they do that introduction? Um, Kido, Kido Minat. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Right? How about now, Mr. Ayola? Agola. <laughs> yes, I got it, right? Yeah. I <laughs> Correct. So for those of you who don't know, that's his real name, actually. Ayola Agbola. So real quick, your name is Kidominat. Yeah. Why? How did that come about, first of all? Let's know how you came up with that name. And what does it mean? That was like um like 12 years ago when I started, when I decided I wanted to become a producer. OK. So I was looking for a name to use, and my sister just came up with that name. She was like, oh. I was thinking of different names to use. Yeah, she yeah. came up with that, I was like, oh, that's cool. Let me use that. So yeah, was that. there any other name you wanted to use that didn't that you didn't use? Now, which of the names did you think of, like by yourself? Nah, like? no, I can't tell you. You know what I'm saying? That's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just give That's us one. Just give us one. Just say one. Even if not one, just drop one. One of those blinks. Blinks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that means blinks on the beats. Yeah, that kind yeah, of thing, yeah, right? Good. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, well, I was like, <laughs> blinks. Wow, whatever, man. Okay, so Kidominant. Good to have you on the show today. Yeah. It's amazing. And Juno, you know he's also a disc jerky. People didn't know that. That's yeah. one side of you that nobody knows. Yeah, that's, um, the thing is, before I became a producer, I started off as being a DJ. Okay. Yeah, I, used to, I started DJ when I was like 14, you know. Wow. I used to DJ. And when I was my, throughout my high school, I used to DJ for like events and okay. all that. So, I mean, eventually I stopped DJing when I got into production full time. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, until January this year. Mm -hmm. So I took DJing back again because when I was in the States, it's mm -hmm. like every producer out there is a DJ. The DJ, yeah. Because that's the only way you can tour. Okay. As a as a producer, so. Okay. And I was going to I was about to do my um, my second tour, which was on court tour. So I had to okay. just get back on that DJ and mm -hmm. I did that. So so if yeah. um, you were to choose to be a DJ or a producer, which one would you be? Looking at I'm a, the standard of Nigeria. I don't even see myself as a DJ right now because okay. I'm not I'm not a DJ as such. I'm a producer. You know what I'm saying? That's the one that's bringing so, yeah, money now. Yeah, DJ is just a way to play my music for the audience to hear the crowd, you know? Yeah, right? yeah. Just to make a show out of my, my to showcase my music as mm -hmm. well, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, looking at your career as a producer, you yeah. are one producer that came out and people were not too expecting, they were like, ah, okay, the first track was a hit. Okay, good, good, good. Let's see if he's gonna produce something else. And mm -hmm. you kept on producing hits after hits after hits now. Yeah. As a producer, did you think that you would get to this point of being, you know, recognized. You know, did you ever think, or did you just do it because you wanted to speak through the music? The thing that I never like, the fame wasn't even hasn't been anything. Like, if you notice, I don't really get in the videos, mm -hmm. you know, all of this stuff. Cause yeah, that's true. The, the <laughs> fame is not what I'm doing. What I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm all about the music and the business of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. When I started off, I knew I was doing, I knew I was made to do this. Okay. It wasn't a question, it wasn't something I was trying to ask myself, am I sure I want to do this or not? Mm -hmm. I just knew naturally, like, this is what I want to do. And this is what I'm best at doing. Mm -hmm. Of everything I've tried to do in life, this is like the best thing that I think is natural for me. Yeah. So, I mean, making hit records after it worked, I think yeah. that's just natural for me, you know? Ah, I like that. It's, it's a bit proud. So it's it's not, not just natural. <laughs> we make hits. Come on, no, come on, man. There is no pride, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like, if you don't blow your trumpet, who will blow it? Okay, now, looking at you, you've, you've done uh, songs with people like David O. Whiskey yeah. and, and all the likes, yeah. So, as a producer, I ask producers this question every time I talk to them, like, with an artist now, how yeah. are you able to interpret an artist's idea when they just bring it to you raw. Do you also impute your own ideas into their songs or do you just take it like, okay, Whiskey wants me to do this, I'll just do this and send it back to him. How does that work for you? The thing is behind the scenes, what most people don't know is producers are in charge of like 80% of what goes down. Okay. 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And okay. that's for most artists. I'm not saying like all artists, you know. Yeah. But most artists, producers, and I mean, when you talk about lyrics, producers, I don't say, hey, sing this one, say something yeah, like this. Yeah. So, I mean, the artists might end up singing it, but producers are the first person to say, why don't you say this? Why mm-hmm. don't you say this? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, most of the time, the artists come with the ideas, you know. But to make the to paint the old picture of that song to make it come out as a record that you guys hear, mm-hmm. producers we do this like the major work of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So okay. So you guys yeah. have like uh, like you said eighty percent input in yeah, most of most songs, of yeah. the songs yeah. you produce. Sometimes hundred percent, sometimes fifty percent, depends on mm-hmm. the artist. Depends on you know. Have you ever produced any whack artist that you knew it was whack, but you're just like this guy don't pay money, shall I? Mean, I just put nothing. Like, <laughs> Made it go. I think every producer has been that. <laughs> and I'm sure you did not put I'm sure you did not put your your no. signature on it. <laughs> Just a guy, take this beat, they go, so they go. Let, let me tell you, there are some <laughs> cases where I've like said, uh, I can't do this, take yeah. your money back. Are you you yeah, there are cases where you be like, let's just try this guy. Yeah. Can, you know, there are cases where you be like. Ah, we can't say this one can just blow up. Old. Yeah, anything so, can happen. So you have just, yeah, I'll just yeah. go to your guts and then. Mm. Mm. So there's no time you've had an, an like a. Uh, an altercation with uh, an artist, like, no, don't sing it this way. I say, no, this way I want to sing it. Like, no, that kind of argument. Definitely funny, like our person. Because <laughs> if, if you can't sing and yeah. you, you can't take help, yeah. so that's two problems. Then there's a problem. Yeah, yeah. that's two. That's two problems. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. A, that's a big one. Okay, now, so as, as a producer, now, what are the major challenges you face in this industry? Because the industry is growing. There's a lot of um, people say music. I say music is expensive. Yeah, it's very expensive, you know. So, True. as a, as a producer now, what are the challenges you face in this industry? You know, putting your stuff together, getting it out there. How? What are the challenges that major? I can, at this point, I mean, I don't really think there's any challenges as such for me personally. Mm-hmm. You know, but at this point, the only challenges I can say I have mm. is the fact that I have to be like. Different places at the same time. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So okay. I just got back from this like two two days ago. Ah. And then this is the problem. Okay. I'm in a, I'm a Nigerian Afrobeat producer. Okay. For me to keep making music, I have to be you here. You have to be here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, I have other stuff I'm doing outside the country. So yeah. It's crazy to just be able to shuffle between here at and the same there. Time. And then you can't yeah. come to Nigeria and say, what's come and sit down for? No reason. That has to be like. True, true. Because no, so. that's outside your idea, there's money coming in. Yo. <laughs> this place, there's, the money is limited. Yeah, and right. again, okay. the structure of the industry is a big problem for okay. every producer. Okay, know? okay. The structure as it is only favors the artist, doesn't favor the producers. Hmm. You know? So and that's, that's, that's the problem. Hmm. And so I hope so what, yeah. would you, what would you say needs to be added to that, to this structure that would make the producers be favored? I think what needs to be added to the structure is not just a music industry thing. It's okay. It is it's a problem of the whole country in okay. general. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's, our country is lawless. We all know that. Yeah. Because if there's laws, there's no way somebody's going to be producing and not get royalties of their songs. True. Somebody's going to get locked up for that. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, I mean, Nigeria as a whole country yeah. has to fix a lot of things. Hmm. Before we even say we're not, because if you tell them you want to pass one bill of music, they will tell you with all the problem with this Nigeria. It's music, music you want to fix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, I get it's, you. It's a whole lot, but I mean, when it comes down to the music sector, yeah. I think there should be a structure mm-hmm. that makes that makes everyone that puts, I mean, puts effort in making cr- or creating a song hmm. earn from it. Hmm. Hmm. Now, talking yeah, about Nigeria yeah. now, as you mentioned this country, I said, let me just, let's dive into something else a bit. Yeah. Now, this current situation about the SARS thing, harassing people, harassing artists yeah. and people who look like artists. What do you mm. have to say about this? What do you think is a way out of this dilemma? Because I was working on this. Do you, do you know what I think? Me, how you doing? Do you know what I think? Yeah. I think they need to beat some of these SARS people. They need, <laughs> to, they need to beat them. Because, let me tell you this is, okay. I open, I go on Instagram every yeah. day. Every single day, there's a day, every single day, there's no day, like, in the past three weeks now, that you go online, you don't see something sad arousing people and yes. all of that. Yeah. And that is totally wrong. Mm. The other day, I, I saw news that they went to the club, they two people. Yeah. yeah. Just like two days ago, they went to somebody's house, somebody's private residence, doing a party to take people from there. Can you imagine? What law, what country does that? I mean, mm. and nobody's trying to stop that. Mm-hmm. So now the government is not doing anything about that. People True. have to do something about it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? When we, when we, the same way we are seeing news that SARS are people. When we see news that people are arising SARS, 
I think the, the solution will start to come from that. The government will start to see it. When it comes to like, when it comes to something really serious, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? This is totally wrong for people, for police to be harassing people, going to people's private restaurants. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. ah, that's too much. Have you ever been harassed by police officers? Before? No, the only day, I mean, I almost got robbed by police. For real? I was, okay, there was this night I, I pulled up in front of KFC, I was about to go and get some food. Yes. And then I just saw, I saw people, no uniform. They were ducking yeah, we and they, they were coming out of like someone jumped out of some compound. I don't know. It was ducking. Like, I thought I was getting robbed. Like, wow. They came out with guns. I don't know, came out from the other side of the road. I don't know, came. I like, hey. <laughs> I just, <laughs> so I still this still, is the movie. You no, know, I was, I was still still like, okay, this is the, this is it. Food. Yeah, this is the There's robbery. No way out of this. <laughs> this is it. Wow. Until some one of them said, may we know you. That was when I knew these were cops. Yeah, because they asked to know who you were. So at that wow. point, I just told them, I'm going to call your DPO right now. And then they all left. So, but look at it now. If I didn't have a DPO contact, I didn't know. Yeah, I was yeah. just a normal person. Normal procedure. They like, extorted me. Done. Yes. Well, you end you up behind saying? the counter. I mean, all that stuff is very wrong. I need mm. to fix it. fix that. Mm. Okay, now, this is our country. Well, yes. Now, let's, let's move on to another issue that has to do with Nigeria again. This is about, uh, I'm sure you must have seen the video that Files, the cover that Files did of uh, yeah. the Childish Gambinos, This is America. And he did this in Nigeria. Mm. Now, <clears throat> it's raised a lot of, you know, opinions recently. So, what would you say is your opinion about this video? And what do you think is right or wrong with it, basically? About the video? Yes. I think it was perfectly executed. I okay. think that's, that's like, I mean, he, he tried to remake Charlie Gambino. Yes, you know, yes. This is America, <laughs> and that, that was like a perfect execution of mm -hmm. that. I mean, with reference to Nigeria and what's going on right mm -hmm. now. So, I mean, with the, I heard the Muslim something. Yeah, like yeah, they had a problem with the ladies dancing in the hijab. They said, why would you have um, ladies dancing? Yeah, I think they should hijab. understand that, that is not, it didn't target the, the Muslims with that idea, you know, okay. the context of that whole thing. It okay. targeted the the um, Chibo girls. Yes. Which we all understood. Yeah. I mean, everybody that watched that understood. But I'm sure the people who were attacking him for that mm -hmm. don't really understand that context. They think he's just using mm. girls to dance in there. Mm. You know, I mean, they just need to enlighten them on, on that. I mean, that should solve the problem. I because mean, I heard they're, they're actually suing him. They're going to sue him to court. You can't sue Files. You, <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, sue, you can't sue the legal system. Sue the legal, sue the system. Lawyer, <laughs> sue the legal <laughs> system. Really? That was it. You have to sue the legal system, man. How does that even work? No, I've seen his dad in action on TL. Like, you know. This man? <laughs> Yo. You know. Okay. Uh, nah, well, yeah. well, we're hoping that, yeah, let's see how that turns out. Because this country, things can, you know, go yeah. sideways. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, it's, I don't think it's, it shouldn't be that serious. It yeah, shouldn't be. Nah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's but the way they're taking it is like, man. Nah, they, they will still be there, though. It's not an issue. Okay, so, so Kidominant. Now, about, uh, yeah, I try to keep Kidominant. That's quite long, though. Kido. Why did you call you Kido? Yeah, people call me Kido. Kido is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> okay, so Kido. I, but I think Kido means you're quite young, right? That's what it is. Doesn't matter. Kiddo, right. So, Kiddo, looking at it now, yeah. are you in a relationship? I'm single. You're single? <laughs> searching? Single and searching. Lonely? Looking. Everything. Everything. <laughs> You're all of them. All the above. Okay, the reason why I ask this is because yeah. we're talking, um, there, was, there, was a, there was an interview about uh, with uh, Chimamanda. I'm sure you know Chimamanda. She had an interview yeah. with um, Trevor Noah. And uh, they, were, they were talking about chivalry. Yeah. Men opening doors for women, blah, 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 blah. And all that works. Do you mm. think... It's um, it's only a man's duty to be chivalry, to be chivalrous. Do you think it's only a man's duty, or do you think a woman can do it? If a man can do it, a woman can do better. That's the saying, right? Yes. So yeah. What do you think? I mean, she and Amanda respect her a lot. Yeah. You know, I think she's one of the people that have put Nigeria in, in the front international there, scene. You know yeah. Saying, yeah. So. But at the same time, nobody's perfect. I think everybody has their own okay. shortcomings. You know. Okay. I feel like she knows too much. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's deep. No, no, true, true. Because the thing is, deep. When, when you know, like what they say, when you overknow. You get exactly. When you know too much, it becomes like a problem no, for no, the problem. average person. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, in that, in that case, yeah. I mean, uh, people don't see the, e the essence of being that way to women, yeah. you know, to open doors for them. To yeah. like, it's it's courtesy. It's just what you do to just appreciate women at the end of the day. Okay. It's not a contest of power, who is stronger or who is yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I think she she thought way above all of that. Hmm. 
this is not opening the door because you're weak. No, mm -hmm. this is opening the door because, oh, I respect you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? That's mm. what it is. She should understand that. I mean, I think she should understand that. Mm. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, that's another husband material <laughs> 200 years here. He'll be opening all the doors. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, but it's good. It's good yeah. that to see, like, men who actually think this way about the situation. Because yeah. for me, I was going to say, yeah, so that's true. Let the women open the door a bit. You know, our hands are paining us. We'll be opening <laughs> the door soon. You know, that kind of yeah. thing. But it's good. And... And uh, I, this is just my random question of the talk. Why do you think Nigerian girls are very romantic? Nigerian girls? <laughs> yes. They are romantic to morning. <laughs> <laughs> Kilo, take it, take it, take it, no, take it, take it. I'll tell you that I like that. <laughs> they are romantic to money. Mm. My Nigerian girls, they love her. Mm. Mm. This is fact. I'm sure that came out of personal experience. <laughs> mm. Nigerian no, girls. No money, no. Food. No money, no love. No love it doesn't work. Nah. So wait, Kilo, has there been any time in your life where where you would say you were broke? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Now, did you have a girlfriend at that time? Like, do you know, funny enough, I've been lucky to have like girls that used to like ride with me. They'll just be there. So I don't look back, I'll tell them, ah, you try to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you were there this time. This time. <laughs> we're not seeing <laughs> ah, mm. But were they, were they yeah. Nigerians? Yeah, they're Nigerians. Ah. Where are so, those girls now? Uh, we can't okay. find that kind anymore. It's now money. No, but funny enough, I mean, yeah. it's, it's still crazy because, I mean, I look back at those times and I'm like, Wow, so mm. I was staying there and this girl was actually... And she was loving her. Wow. So. You know, sometimes <laughs> we look at our throwback pictures, we'll be like, ah, oh, this and they were liking us then. Do you understand? God, <laughs> help us. Okay, so now, Kido, let's talk about your, your, your music now. Yeah. Or let's divert a bit to your educational background now. Yeah. Uh, being uh, a producer and uh, a, a DJ, I know that it takes a lot of technicality. Yeah. You have to be someone who probably understands, reads, practice, and all that. So mm. tell us about how your background educationally came about. And what did you do, study, and all that? Um, initially, when, when I was, I mean, throughout my childhood days, mm -hmm. I was, like, naturally a lover of art. I used to, like, draw and paint. Okay, okay. You know, in my house, my dad had a section that was just for arts. We had, like, oh. music instruments, paintings, and all that, yeah. just for section. So, and then I naturally grew up loving arts. Okay. I, w I used to do mold. I used to mold. I used to paint. I used to do crafts and all of that when okay. I was very young. Okay. So I think it was that art that developed somehow into music mm. eventually. So, mm. and um, good. In high school, I studied sciences. In uni, oh. I did actuarial science, which is like crazy complex mathematics. My brother, I can't so enjoy I mean, that's good. all this time, all this time, I used to like, I used to be like, damn, this is not what this is not what I want. But, <laughs> <laughs> but then eventually, I realized that at the end of the day. It kind of added to my knowledge and yes. made me give me an edge over just an average art person. Mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. I'm still happy about that eventually. That's <laughs> good. That's yeah. good. That's good. So so if you had the opportunity to change something in your path, yeah, what would that be? Something that happened. You know, oh, maybe I made that decision or I made Shit. that mistake. I, I really don't think I would change anything. Everything went yeah. wild because yeah, you're yeah, good. Yeah, I'm good with everything. I feel like I made a lot of right decisions. You know, okay. Based on going with my guts. Not, yes. Not yes. listening to anybody or anything. So. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So as a, as a producer now, yeah. because I know that lately most producers are coming out to the limelight mm -hmm. because, like you said, um, a lot of. Um, Accolade are not given to the producers. Yeah. They give everything to the to the artists. So, as a producer now, do you think like you said you're not up for the fame, but don't you think that being this uh, popular, mm. the fame will come along? Yeah. Do you think you can take it? Eventually, something is inevitable. I can't escape it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking like, at the kind of personality you have. Yeah. You're more of like a laid back, <laughs> chilled guy. Yeah. So, you know? <laughs> so if the, the fame comes and decides to invade your private space, that that's one thing I, I would never allow. You know? <laughs> at the same time, I mean, fame comes and all of that. It comes with this benefit as well. But yes. I will never allow you to like get into my private private place. You know? hmm. Because there are a lot of um, celebrities who are forced, or mm. I would say conditioned, to put their private lives on social media. Pictures of this, where you are today, what you're doing at yeah. the moment. Still, Do you think still, that would happen? still, 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 everything is everything boils down to per, uh, personal decision and preference. Mm -hmm. A lot of artists, I mean, they know what they're doing. They put the pictures out. They do. I mean, if I want to be like that, then mm -hmm. I can easily be like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I can easily get PR and all yeah, of that to, to keep put you out there. there. But I decided not to do that. So, hmm. 
All right, so yeah. ladies, we are very sorry. He's not going to come out like that. <laughs> no, see, well, I might feel tomorrow morning. I might wake up and feel like, be like that. Yeah, <laughs> this is live. You don't have to be one way through your True, life, you know? true, so. true. Okay, now, so Kidomino, before, after being uh, one of the top producers, putting out hit songs with top Nigerian artists, yeah, what else should we expect from Kidomino? Yeah, I mean, I'm pushing everything in notch. You know, what I'm saying? I just dropped my first, very first official single, okay. featuring Whiskey. Oh, all right. You just dropped um, last month, and then I'm actually here for the promotions and all of that. So okay. make sure the song keeps going. So I mean, it's a whole lot right now. I mean, all the while I've been producing, 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 mm -hmm. producing. And my aim, my dream was okay. I want to be producer of the year. Okay. And whenever I win producer of the year, I'm going to start being. Okay. I'm going to start exporting yeah. stuff, and yeah. then. I actually started putting out stuff like a week before I became producer of the wow. year. Wow. I didn't know it was going to happen. Did you know it was so going to happen? I was like, man, if it happens, it doesn't happen. I'm moving on. moving on. on. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it actually happened like right on time. So yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so now you, you, you say you have a, a joint whiskey. Yeah. Now, how did you do that? Did you tell him what he should sing about? Or did you Yo. just give him the beer and say, who is it? Do, do your thing. Who is it? One of the, ah, nah, he's the most talented person I've ever worked with wow, in my nice. whole life. That's nice. No. <laughs> that's nice. Trust me, bro. Like, Wiz can record a whole album in one right time. There. Like, right there. He's too talented. Like, the music is all over him. You know? mm. So, that was one thing I realized. When I was working with him, I was like, bro, just do your <laughs> Yeah, so just take it. When, do I had, it. when I had... I had that hook, I had the hook on the song. Okay. I had it already. So you okay. just, heard it, I was like, damn, this is a jam. I, <laughs> see, I've not heard this kind of chorus in a long time. Are you so serious? Like, you, know you just did the verses and I was like, you know, so rap. Hmm. It didn't even take up to 30 minutes. I was like, it's too talented. Bro. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow, not up to 30 minutes to put up a track. You just laced it, boom, boom, boom. Like that, easy. I was like, ah. Hmm. Okay, so as a producer now, how long does it take you to finish a, a song? Like, mix everything, everything, everything. There's no timeline actually. It just depends on. But I would say the shortest. What has been the shortest time you did it? Like the shortest time. Yeah. Four was not like thirty minutes. The videos for thirty minutes. Yeah, it's not like thirty minutes. Wow. I mean, and the, the logic is the quickest songs actually turn out to be like the biggest. The biggest. Ones. Yeah. Hmm. So okay, now before you leave us though, because uh, which artist then would you yeah. like to see come back now? Like, if you could think of any artist who used to be. A mega star then, or used to be known at that time. Not too far away. I'm not talking about the last time. Yeah. Like you know, like ten years ago, who has been, who is still around, but it's not as big as they used to be. Basically, which artist would you think, would you want to, you know, mm. bring back the limelight, or who would you want to work with? So okay, let me give you a. I jam. think ah, there's a bunch of them actually. Okay. Like, okay, just name one. I mean, they're still very much around. They're still yeah. dropping songs, but yeah. I mean, they might not just be that, dead, that dead like hit. That. Yeah. Yeah, I think Two Face is definitely one of them. Okay, like, okay. So he's still there, but yeah, I mean, yeah. But the way he was then he was on the there, African Queen yeah, track, Two Face, yeah, that was like epic. Two Face, nice, obviously. I mean, nice. That first album, mm, nice. Yeah, that Gongwa nice. song, that yeah. Gongwa song, yeah. ah. it was too much. Was, ah, that was, that was a take home for everybody. There, that was a take home. <laughs> yeah, for then um, I think the more hits in general, they, I mean, they mm. change the Afrobeat music. They yeah. define it, you know. So we're talking so I think about if you can have a more hits back again the mm -hmm. way it used to be, shit, mm -hmm. that would be too much. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so as 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 a producer now internationally, who would you want to work with? One person, if you have the opportunity to work with someone that's internationally a superstar, who would you want to work with? Okay, right now I'm already working with like some of the artists that I've okay. I've dreamt to work with in the oh, states. So. Wow. So I mean, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Give us so, more just now. But, but so. I'm gonna say. I mean, the person I actually want to want to want to work with is yeah. Drake. Drake. You know, Drake. He's an amazing artist. You know, hmm. he makes great music all the time. You know. There's ninety percent, ninety percent chance that anything he drops is gonna be a hit. Yes, you actually. Know, so. Yes. Well, yeah. I don't know how he does it. Maybe there's one Baba somewhere that's no, cooking. No, there's no Baba. It's Nigeria. See, take it, <laughs> roll it, just say it, and it becomes. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah. nice one, man. Nice one, man. All right, guys. So this is the one and only Kido Minas. I know a lot of people don't know him, but hey, look yeah. at him. He's single, ladies. He's Sache. He's desperate. Single and set he's your Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know what I mean? So how can people reach you on social media? Just let them know your handles and stuff like that. So they can follow you, follow you, slide into your DMs. Yeah. You don't know anything can happen. Yeah, all my social media accounts are at Kid Dominant. That's Kid and Dominant written together as K-I-D-D-O-M-I-N-A-N-T. Hmm. At Kid Dominant, that's Instagram, Snapchat, um, 
Twitter, mm -hmm. and um, on Facebook, don't go and fall for all those scammers that have <laughs> there are like 50 scamming pages. <laughs> they will there. give you names. So, <laughs> so on Facebook, I'm okay. Ayoki Dominant Agbola. Okay, so that's it. So remember, it's Ayoki yeah. Dominant Agbola on Facebook. Yeah. Don't go and be deceived by anything. <laughs> so, kiddo, thank yeah. you for coming through. A pleasure. We bro. appreciate this. A nice pleasure. one, nice one. I like your chain, by the way. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, thanks. Thanks a lot.